Ship 25 gets spin primed, Booster 11 goes for a spin, and Starship is going to hot stage? Hi everybody, I'm Matt Anderson with NASA Spaceflight, and I'll be bringing you the latest at Starbase this week, including some recent Starship information just shared by Elon Musk. Let's get started. Last week, we talked about the rapid progress with the ongoing stacking of Booster 12 inside the Mega Bay. Well, this week, we saw the aft section for the engines being joined with the rest of the liquid oxygen tank. The methane tank was also fully stacked at the same time, meaning that Booster 12 is now in two complete halves and waiting to be joined together. Oh, and should I mention that all of this happened in just two weeks? Now, of course, there's a lot of work remaining, like outfitting the booster with its raceway, engine plumbing, pressure pipes, the list goes on but it's kind of interesting to see how they're stacking these boosters much more efficiently. This week also saw Booster 11 going for a stroll out of the Mega Bay and headed to the Rocket Garden. Much like Booster 10, the hope is that this move is for storage rather than scrapping. We also expect that the empty space left in the Mega Bay will soon be taken by the next booster in the pipeline. If I might borrow from Dune, the rockets must flow. Now, if you still aren't satisfied by the cadence of production, you're in luck because construction of the new Mega Bay has hit a whole new level. Level three, to be precise. This milestone comes hot on the heels of the second level completed just last week. At the time of recording this, there are now two of the four corners of this new level installed. There's a good chance by by the next Starbase update, we'll see this level complete. So be sure to stick around our channel to find out or watch it happen live on our 24 seven Starbase livestream. It's worth noting that all these future vehicles we just talked about are still nowhere near near flight ready just yet. And so all eyes of the launch incline should be on Booster 9 and Ship 25 as they approach their time to fly. This week, Elon drops more information about the second flight of Starship and, well, it's gonna get hot for Booster 9. Of all the changes coming up for this next flight, perhaps the most drastic one will be that the stage separation will be done via hot staging. In rocketry, the term hot staging is kind of self-explanatory. It means that at the time of stage separation, the engines on the lower stage are still running when the higher stage ignites its engines and then separates. This in turn blasts that lower stage with a hot exhaust from the engines of the higher stage, hence the hot in hot staging. So you, like I said, you want to start the uh, ship engines before, the, before you've completely shut down the booster engines. Um, of course, doing this without breaking the higher stage is hard, unless your rocket has structures to account for this. In the case of Starship, Elon has mentioned that, starting with Booster 9, SpaceX will install an additional structure on top of the booster with vents that will let the exhaust of the engines escape once they ignite. So we we're adding an extension to booster uh, that has that uh, is, is almost all vent, essentially. Uh, so that allows the, uh, the upstage engine um, uh, plume to uh, go, go through the, the, the sort of vented extension of the booster um, and, and not just blow itself up. This helps prevent an excessive buildup of pressure between the booster and the ship and hopefully avoid damaging either vehicle. For a lot of people, this is reminiscent of the N1 rocket, but when you actually look at all of the rockets that do hot staging, there's a lot of them out there. From the iconic Soyuz and Proton rockets, the historic Titan II rocket that launched Gemini, going all the way to a lot of Chinese and Indian rockets, and most are still flying to this day. It is true, though, that all of those rockets are expendable, while Super Heavy is designed to be reused. Elon also confirmed, as it is to be expected, that Super Heavy will include reinforcements to avoid being blasted by the ship engines. And we'll have to see what's the reusability of such a system in the long run, but as always, SpaceX will just keep making changes and adjustments to the design until it all works out. I guess that also means that our Starship Full Stack plushies are now outdated. Come on, Elon, you could have given us a heads up. Although that also makes them more collectible. Chris should have me in marketing. Why am I doing videos? What this will also mean is that really soon Booster 9 will gain that structure on top of it and we'll be here to cover it, whether via these weekly updates or live as it happens through Starbase Live. Shameless plug. As you can imagine, this also means that the previous inertial separation, you know, the one where the full stack would spin to separate the stages, won't happen anymore. Instead, the booster will just shut down some of its engines and the ship will ignite its engines and then separate from the booster. 
Elon mentioned that by avoiding having to shut down all engines completely and do a flip, they can increase the payload capability of Starship up to 10%. After all, every moment the rocket is not thrusting, it is effectively falling, which slows it down during those moments and leads to inefficiency. So what should we take away from this? Never stop thrusting. Thanks, riders. You're giving that line to me. This week, we also saw teams moving a deluge manifold and water pipes near the base of the launch tower and OLM. These will likely be assembled here before being installed and connected to the rest of the pipes of the deluge system. On one side, the manifold connects to the pipes coming in from the water tanks, and on the other side, it connects to the pipes that will be hooked up to the three manifolds on the water-cooled steel plate system. It's, it's basically, it's think of it like a gigantic upside-down upside shower head. In any case, there's more than rockets to look at this week, the launch site is seeing a lot of hardware return as SpaceX slowly prepares to bring testing back at the orbital launch mount. A few weeks into the repairs and upgrades of the ULM, SpaceX teams removed all the cryogenic pipes that go inside one of the launch mount legs. This was done in order to properly work on the foundations for the water-cooled steel plates that will be installed here. This week saw the return of these pipes back to the base of the ULM, indicating that work down on the foundations for the steel plates is progressing well. We also saw a few weeks ago how teams pulled out the flex hoses that provide fluids to the booster on the OLM. These hoses have now been installed back on the mount and seem to be ready to go. Right after those hoses were returned, SpaceX reinstalled the hood that protects the hoses from the fury of Super Heavy's engines during liftoff. This is definitely a good sign that work is moving at a good pace for testing to resume, as soon as all the foundation and steel plate work is complete. After the first flight, there was great concern about the status of the orbital tank farm, and more recently we saw teams trying to fix the ground tanks. But this week we've finally seen the first deliveries of liquid oxygen and liquid methane to the orbital tank farm, indicating that these tanks and systems are now back to work. Yet another great sign of progress. But of course, the main attraction this week at Starbase was Ship 25 finally performing its spin prime test. During a spin prime test, the vehicle is loaded with liquid oxygen and a little bit of liquid methane. The oxygen pump on each engine is then spun up simulating ignition. Prior to this, the engine pumps are also chilled down to cryogenic temperatures. This is to avoid the super cold liquid oxygen suddenly evaporating as it comes into contact with the engine pump. Next up for Ship 25, we expect to see a static fire test, maybe up to six engines, which should hopefully hopefully validate and qualify the vehicle for flight. As of recording, there are road closures possible for June 26, 27, and 28th, although by the time this video is released, the schedule probably will have changed, so maybe you can tell us in the comments if those dates are still holding true or not. Regardless, we'll still be here covering it live as it happens, so you know the drill. Subscribe and click on the notification bell so you're the first to know when we go live when stuff is happening. Now all that said, what do you think? Will this new hot staging work, or is the risk award ratio a little bit out of whack? Will it kind of work, but affect reusability? Or maybe it's just not that big of a deal? Go ahead and let us know in the comments down below. And if you're wondering what's going on with Starship at the Cape, you can check out our latest Cape flyover video going all over it, although I am in that one too. You can also check out the latest news of the week with the latest episode of This Week in Space Flight. Now that's all for this week. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. The call is now terminated.